Without a plan, revision can be stressful and lead to poor exam results. In this podcast, I guide students through one part of such a plan, study resources. First, we cover the theory for each topic, and then I suggest questions to practice acquired skills. Join me in making your exam experience a success story. A quick disclaimer, OpenAI's large-scale language generation tool ChatGPT has been used to draft some content in this episode. Study Square Limited has adapted the content and takes full responsibility for the publication. Now let's go through some theory about data. Discrete data consists of distinct, separate values, while continuous data can have any value within a specific range. Primary data is collected directly from sources, while secondary data has already been collected and used for a different purpose. Grouped data is organized into categories, while ungrouped data is not. A frequency table is a chart that shows the number of times every value is in the data set. A cumulative frequency diagram shows the total values equal to or less than a value in a data set. A graph that bars to represent different values or categories is called a bar chart. A pie chart is a graph in the shape of a circle. Each part of it represents the size of the corresponding part of the data. A pictogram is a chart with pictures or symbols representing different values or categories. A line graph has the points connected by lines to show the continuity of the data. A histogram is like a bar chart, but the bars are adjacent and there are no spaces between them. A box plot is a graph displaying the distribution of a data set. It consists of a box representing the middle 50% of the data, with a line inside the rectangle representing the median value. Okay, so let's have a look at a question from this topic. Name the type of diagram provided in the image. If you want to see the answer and the solution for this question, use the link in the show notes of this episode. Do you know anyone who could benefit from listening to this episode? Share it with them. That's how we can support more students in preparing for their exams. Also, if you like listening to this podcast, it would be awesome if you left a 5-star rating or a review. The next topic we're going to revise is sampling. Sampling is a method of selecting a subset of individuals from a larger population to make inferences about population. In simple random sampling, individuals are randomly selected from the population with equal probability. This method is easy to understand and implement. Still, it can lead to biased results in the population if the population is not homogeneous. The population is divided into subgroups, strata during stratified sampling, based on specific characteristics. Then, from each subset, a simple random sample is selected. This method can improve the sample's representativeness by ensuring that all subgroups are represented. In systematic sampling, individuals are selected from the population at regular intervals. For example, every tenth individual in a list of individuals might be selected. This method is easy to implement and less susceptible to bias than simple random sampling. However, it can still lead to bias in results if the individuals are not randomly distributed within the population. During quota sampling, specific individuals are selected from each subgroup, called stratum, based on particular characteristics. This method is similar to stratified sampling, but allows for greater control over samples' representativeness. In cluster sampling, clusters of individuals are selected at random from a population, and all individuals within each cluster chosen are included in the sample. This technique is often used when it is too costly or logistically difficult to sample individuals directly from the population. During opportunity sampling, individuals who are available and willing to participate are selected for the sample. This method is convenient and easy to implement. Still, it can lead to biased results if the individuals who are available and willing to participate differ from the population. Frequency polygons, stem and leaf diagrams, and dot plots are useful tools for displaying and analyzing data distribution. A frequency polygon is a graph showing a variable's distribution by connecting the midpoints of the top of the bars in the histogram. A stem and leaf diagram separates the digits of each value in a dataset, with the stem being the first digits 
and the leaf being the final digits. And a dot plot is a graph that uses dots to represent individual observations on a number line. Each dot can be used to represent one or multiple observations. The question that relates to this theory is, name the type of diagram presented in the image. There's a link in the show notes of this episode in case you want to double check the answer for this question. Many students revise for exams without a plan. This can result in sporadic learning, poor exam results and worse career opportunities. However, you can avoid that. Generate your personal exam revision plan on studysquare.co.uk forward slash plan. Okay, so let's have a look at averages. Averages are measures of the central tendency of a set of data. The mean is found by adding all values and dividing the result by their total number. It is also known as arithmetic average. The median is the center of a set of ordered values. For an odd number of values, the median is the middle value. Alternatively, the median is the mean of the two middle values for an even number of values. The mode is the most frequently occurring value in a set of data. A data set can have one mode, more than one, or no mode. The modal class is a range of values that contains the mode. The range is calculated by subtracting the smallest from the largest value in the data set, and it measures the spread of data. Okay, so let's have a look at a question from this topic. 20 volunteers have been cleaning a beach. Each of them has collected the following amount of rubbish in kilograms. 7, 4, 3, 2, 5, 2, 7, 5, 4, 3, 6, 5, 5, 4, 7, 3, 8, 4, 6, 5. Find the modal mass of rubbish collected by a volunteer. If you're unsure about how to solve this problem, you can visit the page of this topic, which is in the show notes. Did you know that we have other podcasts for maths and science? If you're interested to learn more, search for Revision with Jonas on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. So let's learn more about quartiles. Quartiles are measures of the distribution of a data set that divide the data into four equal parts or quarters. The first quartile, denoted as Q1, is the value that separates the lowest 25% of the data from the rest. The second quartile, Q2, divides the lowest 50% of the data from the highest 50% and is known as the median. Finally, the third quartile, denoted as Q3, is the value that separates the lowest 75% of the data from the highest 25%. The interquartile range measures the spread of the data set. We can calculate it by subtracting the first from the third quartile. IQR measures how far apart the middle of the dataset is from the rest of the dataset. Knowing a dataset's quartiles and interquartile range can give us a good idea of its overall shape and spread. In addition, it can help identify outliers or other unusual observations in the data. So let's see an example of a problem for this theory. Find the third quartile for 8, 3, 6, 4, 7, 3, 2, 8, 5, 9, 4, 9, 2, 1, 7, 4, 9, 4. There's a link in the show notes of this episode in case you want to double check the answer for this question. Okay, so let's have a look at standard deviation. Standard deviation measures the spread of a data set. To calculate it, we first need to find the mean or average of a data set. Then for each data point, we find the difference between that point and the mean, square it, and sum these squared differences. Finally, we divide the sum by the number of data points in the data set, or the number of data points minus one if you're working with a sample, and take the square root of this number. For our population, sigma is equal to square root of, open brackets, sigma, open brackets, x minus mu, close brackets squared divided by n, close brackets, where x is a data point, mu is the mean, and n is the total number of data. For a population, s is equal to square root of, open brackets, sigma, open brackets, x minus x mean value, close brackets, squared, divided by, open brackets, n minus one, close brackets, close brackets, where x is the data point, x mean value is the mean of the population, and n is the total number of points. Okay, so let's have a look at the question from this topic. 
Daniel is monitoring the size of magnets produced in the factory. He selected five from a box and measured 10.2 centimeters, 10.1 centimeters, 9.9 centimeters, 10.0 centimeters, 9.9 centimeters. Find the standard deviation of the data to two decimal places. There is a link in the show notes of this episode in case you want to double check the answer for this question. Okay, so let's have a look at line of best fit. A line of best fit can predict the relationship between two variables. On paper, we draw the line so that the distances between itself and the data points are as small as possible. Interpolation estimates a value between two known values. We can use extrapolation to predict a value outside the available range. Outliers are data that significantly differ from the rest. To ignore outliers, they should be identified and removed from the data set before drawing the line of best fit. Okay, so let's have a look at a question from this topic. Marcus has surveyed a few of his classmates. He first asked each of them how many times per week they exercised. Then he measured their VO2 max, which is cardiovascular health measurement. The summarized data are 337, 028, 754, 620, and 442. Which point of the ones provided is an outlier? If you're unsure about how to solve this problem, you can visit the page of this topic, which is in the show notes. Okay, so let's have a look at correlation. Correlation measures the relationship between two variables. We observe positive correlation when both variables increase at the same time. When one variable increases but the other decreases, that's a negative correlation. We can measure the strength of the correlation by the correlation coefficient, which ranges from minus 1 to 1. A correlation coefficient of minus 1 or 1 indicates a strong correlation, while a coefficient of 0 indicates no correlation. Variables with a positive or negative correlation do not necessarily cause the other. There might be a third variable in the relationship, or it could be a coincidence. Now let's mention a question that could be asked in this topic. Name the type of correlation in the graph provided. If you want to see the answer and the solution for this question, use the link in the show notes of this episode. Now that we have covered the theory, it is time to practice solving related problems. So head to studysquare.co.uk forward slash resources and try answering questions on this topic. I hope you have a great week ahead and until next time.